Hey guys. In 1992, Disney released Aladdin. I went to the movie with my mom and brother. It is, without a doubt, my favorite Disney movie of all time. I remember when we got the home video, we were so excited to bring it home that um, when we got there, we accidentally ripped the packaging whenever we were uh, trying to put it into the, the uh, VCR. Um, I, I remember seeing ads for Aladdin for uh, home consoles, and I was really excited to play it because I loved the movie so much. And, well, you know, I saw I saw Aladdin with a sword, and he was fighting with a sword, and that was the Genesis version, and that's the version I didn't really get to play uh, because I had a Super Nintendo. Uh, I remember I rented Aladdin and was a little disappointed because I didn't get to play with the sword, but I got over it pretty quickly. Uh, I rented a lot more and never ended up buying it because every time I rented it, I pretty much beat it. Um, but I was able to pick it up a few weeks ago, and I was really, really happy to do that. Um, not too long after I got Aladdin for the Super Nintendo, I picked up Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. I've got a Sega Genesis now, so I get to try out Aladdin again. Um, I played it once or twice as a kid. I never really got all the way through it, I don't think. Um, you know, either a friend had it or uh, my uncle had it or, or something. I, I remember playing it as a kid, but um, I didn't like it as much as I liked the Super Nintendo version. Um, so I kind of want to see, take a look at both of these, see which one I like better. It's probably going to be the Super Nintendo one because I grew up with this one. but gonna play them both anyway. So uh, let's start with the Super Nintendo version first. Aladdin on the SNES follows the story of the movie fairly well, though some areas were added to extend gameplay. The genie lamp level is kind of like the friend like me number from the movie, so it doesn't really count as one of those extended levels in my opinion. There is a pyramid level that was added, and it doesn't really take anything from the movie, but it doesn't derail the story of the movie either. I'll be honest, I don't really care if a story of a license-based game follows its source material well, as long as the gameplay and the presentation are good. Some people argue that the gameplay is slow and boring compared to the Genesis version. I don't believe this at all. The gameplay is accurate and precise. Aladdin feels fluid and handles very, very well. His ability to hang onto ledges, slow his falls using a rug, swing from poles, and flip off of enemies and objects using a handstand feel natural and fun. If you make a mistake and fall into a pit or get hit by an enemy, it rarely feels like the game's fault. The level design is excellent and always interesting. The game isn't difficult, by any means, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's a fun romp through Agrabah that shouldn't take too long to complete. The game is short, but... I'm okay with that. The graphics in Aladdin are top-notch. While it doesn't have the awesomely crafted character animation from the Genesis version, it still looks very good. Characters are all animated very well. They have that 16-bit animated sprite charm, which I actually like better than the Genesis version. That's just because I'm such a huge fan of pixel art. The backgrounds are gorgeous. There's so much detail in every stage. The city of Agrabah looks so huge and city-like compared to the Genesis version, which looks like it's just a few buildings in the middle of the desert. Genie's levels are bright and colorful. The End Palace has some real cool storm effects in the background when you first get there. Everything looks really good. The music is great. I'm a huge fan of the original soundtrack and score from the movie. This game does the movie's songs justice. The music from the levels that don't have direct movie counterpart really fit the atmosphere well. They all match the spirit of Aladdin's story. They give you a sense of adventure. The sound effects are kind of silly, most likely to reflect that this is a game based off of a family cartoon. I'm not a huge fan of the boink effect that plays when Aladdin takes out an enemy, but it also isn't terrible or distracting. Aladdin even shouts, whoa, when he gets hit, which is kind of a nice touch. The in-game cutscenes are all very nicely animated and really help tell the story. The cutscenes between the levels aren't amazing, but they work for a 16-bit game. 
There is just enough text to let you know what is happening, and it doesn't slow down the pacing of the game too much. The bonus level that you can activate by collecting the Golden Scarab can really help you out if you're having problems getting through the game. You can collect another hit point if you're lucky, but you'll most likely get a continue, a few one-ups, or a health restore. The transitions between levels are fluid and don't feel too jarring, unlike that crazy seizure-inducing scarab scene from the Genesis version. You are also given a password feature, which is always a bonus, though since it's such a short game, it's not really needed. In conclusion, I highly recommend Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. It's a fantastic game and easily one of my favorites. Uh, in fact, I played through this game about four or five times while I was uh, working on the review for this, uh, for, this, for this game and for the Genesis version. Um, I will admit, I'm... I see this game as a superior one of the pair mainly because, as I said before, I played it more as a kid. Um, uh, but uh, if you want to play it, it's not on the Virtual Console, I don't believe, but uh, it's kind of cheap for the Super Nintendo, not a hard, hard one to pick up, it's kind of easy to find too. Um, the Game Boy Advance version I used to have, but I got rid of recently, uh, I, I didn't even realize it, it was actually... It's actually a little bit more pricey, um, and I uh, traded it, so I sold it, but in a way, whatever. Um, it's largely the same, but I think there's an added bonus level, and the licensed music, like the actual songs from the movie, are not in the Game Boy Advance version. So, I mean, that doesn't really affect the gameplay, but it does kind of affect some of the enjoyment, especially in, like, the Genie's level, where you kind of expect that Friend Like Me song. But, uh, yeah, play Aladdin! for Super Nintendo. It's a great game. Disney's Aladdin for the Sega Genesis was produced by Virgin Games with help from Disney Software. Disney actually helped with the graphics for this game, and you can definitely tell. The story of the game doesn't follow the story of the movie very well, but like I said earlier, this doesn't bother me if the gameplay is good. Examples are that Aladdin has to recover the Golden Scarab for Jafar before he can get into the Cave of Wonders, and Jasmine's, like, mentioned once throughout the story of the game, and there's really not an ending. But, like I said, I don't really care. Aladdin's gameplay is good. It's a lot more combat-driven than its SNES counterpart. For some people, this is a big improvement. I'm more partial to solid platforming than I am fast-paced action, but that's just me. Aladdin has a sword. This always comes up in debates. Sega's Aladdin is better because Aladdin gets to use a sword. That's great, but the sword's hit detection just doesn't seem very good. I tend to use the apples more often than the sword, just because they're easier to hit the enemies with. Also, you don't even use the sword against the final boss. You throw apples at Jafar to beat him. Really? I think that a game that boasted sword play could have a much better final boss that incorporated a sword fight or something. Speaking of bosses, this game actually has a few. I actually really like the bosses in Virgin's Aladdin because they're kind of varied and all take a different strategy to beat. This really makes the game more interesting and fun. Aladdin moves a lot faster on the Genesis than on the SNES. I think that in some parts, the speed just makes the game feel a little too erratic. The platforming gets a little floaty as a result, and you may miss jumps until you get the handle of your character. I only found this to be a problem near the beginning of the game, but later on I didn't notice it as much because I got used to it. The level design is just okay in my opinion, but that may be because of the game's focus on combat more than platform. There are a few blind jumps, but I didn't have too much of a problem with it. The graphics are likely the first thing that you'll notice about this game. While I prefer pixel-based sprites and backgrounds, I can't deny that this game looks really good. I can't believe how well the characters are animated for a 16-bit system. I had honestly forgotten this until I sat down and played the game again. I was amazed. The backgrounds are actually kind of bland in some places. They're drawn well, but the dungeon, Genie's Lamp, and the last level all look kind of boring. The upside, though, is that there are a ton of little easter eggs in the background, like Mickey Ears, Sebastian all locked up, the dog from Pirates of the Caribbean, among others. The music isn't bad. I like the original songs pretty well. Uh, the desert level music is really catchy, and while the end level music and the Escape from the Cave of Wonders music is the same, I still liked it. There are a good number of songs from the movie, but some of the instruments make them sound kind of annoying. 
I really don't like the rendition of Prince Ali, but the rest aren't bad at all. The cutscenes in Aladdin are only shown between levels. They are very text-heavy and take a while to get through compared to the SNES. They kind of feel like they slow down the action, especially since the action of the game is so fast-paced. The little scenes between the levels, like the level complete and the game over scene, are actually pretty humorous, but I feel like they cut too quickly and feel a little jarring. I really don't like the Scarab Seizure scene. I don't get it. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed this game. I had a blast playing through it. It just doesn't really have a fair chance whenever I, you know, compare it to one of my favorite games of my childhood. Um, really glad I had a chance to pick it up and play it, though. Uh, if you already have a Genesis, it's not hard to find. Um, it was really cheap whenever I picked it up, and I got the case with it, too, so, hey, uh, I think I got the, yeah, got the instruction manual also, so that's pretty cool. Um, recommend picking it up. It's well worth it, trust me. Um, for my closing thoughts, originally I was going to declare a winner between the Genesis game and the Super Nintendo game, and, um, I really wanted to do that because I've seen people argue about it online, on, on YouTube, on Twitter. Uh, I think I even put, I, I, I posted a poll, poll on Twitter to see which one people liked better. And, um, you know, this one got a lot more love, actually. But, uh, you know, I don't agree with them at all because I'm going to go with this one. But the bottom line is they're both completely different games. I mean, the only thing that they have in common are that they're both based off of the same movie. I mean, here you've got a really solid platformer that's kind of a little bit slower, but it's methodical, which is really enjoyable. Here you've got an action game that uh, focuses on combat that's really fast-paced. Um, it's almost like if you were trying to compare Mario to Mega Man or something like that. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to compare them. Um, but I really like both of them. Um, put a gun in my head, I'm going to say Aladdin, all for the Super Nintendo. But uh, they were both really good games. So I hope you enjoyed my review. Uh, I haven't edited yet, so I don't know if this is going to be any longer than normal. Uh, but I did review two games, so I assume that it's going to be kind of long. Uh, so I hope you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Um, also, if you liked the video, go ahead and click that like button down there and um, comment. You know, if, if you disagree with me, any of my points, or have something to add, or you, know, you want to talk about your experience with Aladdin as a kid, that'd be great. I look forward to hearing from you. So, um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Later.